happy Friday, February 1st. Oh, yeah. So come on in, pull up a chair. The Daily Dope is in the air. Howdy, 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 gang. Yes, I'm Jeff McAleer, back once again as your host here at The Daily Dope, presented by TheGamingGang.com. Welcome aboard to episode 239 of The Daily Dope. So today is the 1st of February, yes, and TGIF. Yeah, it is Friday, so let's get going with the weekend, right? This has been a very, very bizarre week so far, for myself at least. But do want to point out, today I am going to be reviewing Paper Tales. A little more info on the back there, including the game's name, which is not on the front. Anyway, I am going to be reviewing Paper Tales from my friends over at Stronghold Games in just a few minutes. Um, so weird thing. Okay, so Monday powers out. And we weren't going to sit around here in the uh, freezing cold. So then we, uh, so no show. And then uh, Tuesday, I did uh, an interview with uh, my good friend Mark H. Walker of Flying Pig Games and Tiny Battle Publishing. Had a lot of fun with that. That was very cool. Got that up uh, Thursday night. And then the uh, Polar Vortex was uh, sleeping in Tuesday night. And I think people know by now, if you watch the show, the Duct Tape Studios, it's downstairs and there's no heat so i mean normally it's okay like today it's a little cool but uh you know it's it's not crazy it's not like you know you can see my breath or anything like that but on wednesday and thursday oh yeah it was plenty cold down here so uh there were no shows either so it's good to be back only two shows this week so oh well eh, what can i tell you all right this is a live stream if this is the first time you've ever popped in to catch the show do want to point out there is chat available on YouTube. It is not on screen. It's one of the ways that I kind of keep some of these stranger commenters at bay. But I do pay attention to the chat. So if you have a question, comment, maybe there's something about Paper Tales that uh, maybe you want me to get into a little more detail about as I'm doing my review in a bit, then by all means, chime in and let me know. I will respond. Do have some news tonight, so I'm going to get to that. I've got uh, an auction that I'm going to roll out. I will talk about that in a little bit. Of course, I'm going to talk about what's on next week's shows as well. So I do have news tonight. I know some folks are not fans of the tabletop gaming news. So if that's the case, please make sure to take a look in the show notes. You'll see the timestamps you can skip right past the news. All right, that being said, let's move on into it because Keymaster Games has a unique looking family fun board game. It's kind of more of a card game. It's up on Kickstarter right now. It uh, is 100% funded, it is well past 100% funded. And I've got the dope on Parks. Parks is a celebration of our national parks featuring illustrious art from 59 Parks print series. In parks, all capital letters, players will take on the role of two hikers as they trek through different trails across four seasons of the year. While on the trail, these hikers will take actions and collect memories of the sites they visit, memories being the resources in the game. Players will trade in these memories to collect national park cards, mementos, at the end of each hike. You'll be able to purchase equipment and fill canteens to make your hikes more efficient but at the end of the year, it's the park cards and photos you've collected along your journey that will win you the game. Welcome to Parks. We've all been inspired by our world at some point. In fact, if you're like the people in the audio journals we've been sharing, then you have an inspiring memory of an experience you had in the wild. The 59 Parks print series reached out to us. Of course, we're talking about Keymaster Games, not us as in the gaming gang and captured our imagination with the beautiful artwork they are creating in celebration of the United States National Parks. We could not think of a better way to help celebrate with them than to develop a game that makes use of this beautiful work 
and helps give back to the perks themselves. Do want to mention there is a short video that is going to show you some of the game because unfortunately the only images I can pull without stealing somebody else's, you know, photography off of Board Game Geek are uh, from these prints from 59 Parks print series. So let's jump on in. It's about a two minute video. So let's see what Keymaster Games has to say. Keymaster Games and 59 Parks print series have partnered together to bring you Parks. Parks features artwork from more than 35 artists in celebration of our national parks. It's a game about exploration and about experience. From the depths of the Grand Canyon to the heights of Mount Rainier, Parks will take you on a journey from the great sand dunes to the islands to visit American Samoa. Take on the role of two hikers as they trek across trails over the course of four seasons of a year. Collecting memories along the way, you'll be able to improve equipment and visit national parks. The canteens and gear you collect will ease the way. But remember, it's not about how fast you get to your destination, it's about the journey. Welcome to Parks. Parks is for one to five players, ages nine and up, plays in around 30 to 60 minutes. You can reserve a copy of the game for a $39 pledge. I believe 10% of that is going to go towards uh, conservation for America's national parks. And you can also receive the print and play as well. I believe the print and play will be available once the Kickstarter ends, which is February 19th. The game itself has an expected delivery of this August. So pretty nice, pretty sweet. I like the artwork. The artwork's very cool. Although I have to admit, the gameplay itself is very reminiscent of another game. Uh, do I have it floating around over here? Never fails. I never have something right where I'm looking for it. Oh, I'm sure it's behind me someplace. Uh, or then again, maybe it's not. Uh, but a game called Trailhead, which sort of the same kind of uh, vibe going on in that game, except um, you're trying to survive in, I want to say, Arizona. But it's got the same sort of, you know, the, the hikers and the cards and canteens and things like that. So uh, it's kind of kind of surprised, very similar sort of gameplay. But I got to say, I love this artwork. This artwork is very, very cool. Very um, NWA kind of feel to it, you know, from back in the 40s. Anyway, all right. So by all means, check that out. Do you want to point out the board game Brides and Bribes? Brides and Bribes. Say that twice. <laughs> right? Brides and Bribes. It's like, but huh? Huh? It actually will be arriving in the US. It is coming this April from Aries Games, and I've got the dope. Italian companies Aries Games and Space Balloon Games announced a partnership to distribute the Euro-style board game Brides and Bribes in the United States and non-European countries. Brides and Bribes is a worker placement and resource management board game set in Genoa during the Renaissance period. It was funded on Kickstarter in late 2016 and shipped to Kickstarter backers in late 2017, but it was not distributed to retail in the USA. In Brides and Bribes, each player assumes the role of one of five families struggling to increase their power and become the new Doge, Doge, I forget how it's pronounced. Lord of the city. Isn't that, uh, isn't that a Venetian term? Maybe, I don't know. An innovative and unique use of a hidden worker placement mechanic gives players the feeling of being part of a Renaissance Genoa full of intrigue and deception. By hiring new employees at every turn using a deck building system, players experience the feeling of ever growing power during the game. In each round, players secretly plan to send a family member with the right skills into Genoese burrows to perform one of the five possible actions. 
hire new employees, collect money, get new workers, increase your influence points, or convince the local lord that your family is worth a marriage with his beautiful daughter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brides and Bribes is a game for two to five players created by Andrea Galazzi, Elisa Linardi, Pietro Navarato, Navarotto, sorry, and is originally published by Space Balloon Games. Brides and Bribes is thematic, engaging, and highly interactive. It's a great fit to our catalog, said Roberto De Meglio, director of R&D at Aries Games. Is that what Roberto's title is? Huh, I didn't realize that. I talk to him all the time. <laughs> well, I should say all the time. I always talk to Roberto when we go to Gen Con and uh, to Origins, when he's there. I don't think he was at Origins last year. Anywho, we hope this is just the start of a long and fruitful cooperation with the Space Balloon team. We're delighted to join forces with Roberto and his incredible team. We are sure that Brides and Bribes will be the first of many collaborations to come, commented Pietro Navarro, CEO of Space Balloon Games. Brides and Bribes will arrive in April. It is for two to five players for ages 14 and up, plays in about an hour. MSRP info is not available just yet. Taking a look at the game, and uh, there are some... Uh, daughter tiles i guess brides right that uh that are not showing here but uh i'm taking a guess from what i've seen this seems to actually be a weightier game than uh we're being led to believe by the images that i'm able to share but uh, i'm gonna take a guess it's probably gonna carry an msrp around 59 dollars and 99 cents that is a stab in the dark all right, so let's talk a little bit about RPGs because newcomers Guardian Moon Games has a truly rules light RPG up for crowdfunding. I've got the dope on their Kickstarter. Destination Danger is a pocket sized role playing adventure set in the 1930s that can be played anywhere, anytime, and with anyone. I would hope you do, don't just bust this out and start playing it with strangers or trying to play with strangers. You don't even need a table to play on. Would the, that be a pawn? The cards in the Destination Danger deck contain all the information needed for a quick and fun role-playing experience. No player's guide or DM book required. Since Destination Danger uses simple stats and easy to remember rules, anyone, regardless of role-playing experience, can join in and have a blast. Destination Danger is a form of cooperative storytelling in that each player takes on the role of his or her assigned character or characters, or as the game master who controls everyone and everything else while acting as the narrator of the story. Each scenario begins with the characters in the middle of a bad situation, hate when that happens, and the players work together, or not, to resolve the situation successfully. As each player is playing a role, he or she is encouraged to consider the character's stats, special skills, and personality traits when choosing how to act. In other words, each player should endeavor to become the character they are playing rather than just do the thing that they themselves might do in a given situation. That is role-playing, folks. That's what you're supposed to do. The Game Master uses the other cards in the deck, monsters, maps, items, etc., to move the game along. Each card is intelligently designed for optimal Game Master use. One side is the public side. With beautiful illustrations and easy to read names, this side can be shown to all the players or passed around for them to see up close. The private side is for the Game Master only. It contains a brief description of the monster slash item slash whatever, and then a list of options for how it can be used within the campaign. These might be character traits, secrets, curses, effects, you name it. Nothing listed in the options list is set in stone, of course. They are just suggestions for the game master to pick and choose from. Use some, ignore others, make up your own. This way the gameplay is different each time. So let's take a quick peek at the Kickstarter video for Destination Danger. Have you ever tried to get your friends and family into role-playing games? Do they feel overwhelmed by all the rules and time requirements? 
Hi, John here for Destination Danger, the fastest, easiest, funnest role-playing adventure you can take with you anywhere. Here's how it works. Just apply Destination Danger to any group of people not currently enjoying 1930s archaeological action, and then watch the fun begin. Great for avid role players, but easy enough for newcomers too. It comes with everything you could possibly want in such a genre-specific game. Mummies, archaeologists, femme fatales, uh, shady businessmen. Oh, and these incredible maps! Our scientists work hard to bring you a fantastic and fun role-playing experience wherever you want to be. Destination Danger fits in your pocket and can be taken anywhere. Just hand some cards out to your friends or random strangers and engage in some great role-playing action. Tired of playing a hunky but dim-witted action hero? Trade characters with another player or take a turn at running the game. Everything you need is on the cards. We've taken all the hassle out of being a game master. Destination Danger is concentrated fun run off of your own imagination. Here's how to order. Destination Danger is, uh, well, last I had looked, and this is actually a couple of days ago when I put this news piece together, it was, uh, it was over 250% funded, I want to say. It does run through February 5th. Now, you can secure the print and play edition of the game for a $10 pledge, or you can grab the physical release for a $20 pledge. The expected delivery of the print and play is March, and the physical game set is uh, expected for May. I gotta point out, I really dig the artwork. I really, really like the artwork to uh, to these cards. Thing is, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of cards. Now, now this is just between us, right? I am not trying to dissuade you from checking out this Kickstarter. Number one, uh, one thing that I, I I, you know, I wish I had an opportunity to talk to people before they launch their Kickstarters. But um, kind of be honest here, if you don't have a uh, website, and they, they, there is a web address for the company, it just goes and forwards to the Kickstarter. So it's kind of like, hmm. But um, that kind of throws me off a little bit. Plus... Doesn't look like there's tons of cards in this, and I would take a stab in the dark that there's there's plans of oh yeah okay you know we can flesh this out with plenty more cards in the future, but I don't know I don't know I like I like the premise I like the idea I like uh, the idea of having a very very uh, rules light kind of game that you just you know you're using the cards as uh, kind of to get your juices flowing. That's kind of how I would maybe look at these cards as opposed to using them as like, oh, well, this is specifically the mummy's heart. This is exactly what the mummy's heart is. Anyway, but uh, I thought I'd share this because this does look interesting and it looks different. Do you want to mention, uh, I do have just kickstarter.com as far as the, uh, the address because as I mentioned, the company domain name just forwards on to their Kickstarter page, and I'm not gonna put the Kickstarter page there because it's super, super long. So go to kickstarter.com and just search for Destination Danger. You'll find it as long as you uh, you go by the fifth. All right, so if you happen to be in the market for a fantasy role-playing game, which is a bit heavier on darkness and a little lighter on magic and a bit more realistic, you might be interested in Song of Swords from Oblique Industries. Oh, I should say Opaque. Why did I say Oblique? It's Opaque Industries. Here's the dope. Sort of, I should say sort of songs. Duh. How about a sip, Jeff? <laughs> ah, it's a live show. You know how that works. Ah. Song of Swords is a dark, low fantasy tabletop role playing game that focuses on lethal tactical combat with a library of arms and armor inspired by real history. In combat and through role play, your character's choices and preparedness have immediate impact and severe consequences in Song of Swords. The game uses a dice pool system that only requires D10s. 
With a detailed wound system and the freedom to decide exactly where and how you attack, combat is a thrilling and often deadly dance. I would hope so. Inspired by themes and cultures of real-world history, Song of Swords takes place on the continent of Vasca, within the Tattered Realms. It's a rich setting filled with familiar fantasy elements, but below the surface, a dark and sinister world awaits. The game caters to all players, no matter your campaign or character. Play soldiers or gritty mercenaries in historical campaigns, or shrewd sorcerers and cunning elves in high or low fantasy campaigns. Characters that, excuse me, characters that act according to their core nature, pursuing their goals, are rewarded for their efforts and are able to advance their martial proficiency, abilities, and skills. This makes advancement a more rewarding experience than grinding through hordes of enemies. The 274-page PDF of Song of Swords, didn't say Sword of Songs this time, is now available in PDF from DriveThruRPG for $19.99. From what I saw, this does look pretty interesting, um, especially if you're looking for like kind of a grittier, more combat driven role playing game, because there's even uh, an image of the character sheet and you can see it's like the different weapons they have, various different pieces of armor that they're wearing as opposed to, oh, it's plate mail. Oh, it's scale mail. Now, so this looks pretty, pretty interesting. Only thing that kind of throws me off a little bit, and I'm not a fan of the artwork. Uh, the artwork's not terrible, don't get me wrong, but it has that sort of really, I don't know. It's that fantasy art that's all digital, that's sort of, you know, well, the, the image of the character looks okay, but I don't know, just, uh, just doesn't grab me, you know what I mean? But this does seem like this is a pretty cool RPG. Do want to mention uh, that uh, Drive Through RPG moved to new servers a few days ago, just a handful of days ago, and they are having some technical issues, folks. So, do want to mention that uh, do not be shocked if you go to Drive Through RPG and you get like a 500 error returned. Uh, I'm, I'm also. Uh, I should also point out that Sammy just did a review of. Harlem Unbound by Chris Spivey's Dark Hue Studios. And uh, according to Draft Through RPG, they show the PDF, but they're indicating that it's not available for sale. So I don't know what's going on with that. I will talk about that in just a moment. But the final piece of news that I've got, an exciting PC and Mac game based on the board game, Ooh, Invaders from Dimension X from my good buddy, Herman Lutman, is now available for PC. I do believe it's available for iOS as well. Invaders from Dimension X for PC begins the story of the brutal war between the invading alien chaos race, or you could say chaos race, and the only human force capable of defeating them. The old reprobates of the 124th Galactic Marine Raider Battalion. You control the various Marine squads, each with a specialized skill, as they fight their way through an alien enemy that is totally unpredictable. No joke. The Chaos come from another dimension of space and do not behave in a way humans can comprehend. Only with perseverance and skillful strategy, and yes, some good fortune, Will you be able to eventually discover the plans and tactics of these mysterious beings? You can get Invaders from Dimension X for PC. I believe the iOS price is the same. It is available for $14.99. So you can go over to Steam, you can go to the App Store, or you can go to Tiny Battle Publishing and click on the link there. So, pretty cool. Pretty cool. All right, so that is it for the news today. Uh, hopefully, I'll have a chance to check out the uh, in Invaders from Dimension X because uh, I got a kick out of that game. Plus, uh, I, I guess I can, you know, got a little claim to fame about it because uh, I had, you know, not necessarily challenged Herman Lettman, but I had said, uh, oh, man, because he likes chaos in his games. I did chaos, too. 
But in his designs, there's usually some chaos. And uh, I said, yeah, I'd like to see you put together a game that's like complete chaos. That's what Invaders from Dimension X happens to be. All right, so let's talk about what's uh, what's coming up on next week's show. Whoa, wait, what? What was that? Little Magic Bub? It's little Magic Bub. What, you want to talk about Lil Bub's big fund? Well, why don't we have Lil Bub herself tell people about it? All right, so I do want to point out, please consider donating to Lil Bub's Big Fund at the American Society for the Prevention of Cruelty to Animals, otherwise known as the ASPCA. Do want to point out 100% of all funds that are raised are granted out to organizations that care for special needs animals who are awaiting their forever homes or awaiting adoption. I'm a big fan of Lil Bub. Uh, in fact, there were some new photos that popped out from Lil Bub's dude today. And uh, I definitely, definitely dig that a lot. So, also, I had mentioned before that uh, all all profits or whatever, any anything above and beyond my operating costs for the gaming gang as well as the Daily Dope is going to be donated to Lil Bub's big fund and the ASPCA. So I had mentioned come February 1st, I was going to point out I've got an auction. So I'm trying to figure out really how to pull this off. So I don't want to go like on eBay and and crap like that. Why should why should eBay and then um, PayPal get a cut? So what I'm thinking of doing, I'm, I'm going to roll it out there. You know, if people are interested, that's cool. If not, ah, that's cool too. But what I'm going to do is I am auctioning off the second edition. This is brand new. This is the brand new edition of Andy and Abyss. Now, of course, our wargaming fans out there are going to be, you know, much more excited by this uh, than other gamers. I am going to have other stuff as well. So I'm just pointing out this is my first auction. I'm going to try to do two or three a month is what I'm going to plan on doing. So, Andy and Abyss, this is the first title in the coin series from my friends over at GMT. I have reviewed this. This edition here, all I did was unbox it, so it is completely unpunched. I'm going to put this up on Twitter, and I will basically point out that this is the auction for Lil Bub's Big Fun. I guess what we can have is people can reply. They can reply to that tweet. I'm going to pin that tweet so it stays up. I'm going to run it for a week. And whoever's got the highest bid at the end of the week, I will ship this out. Now, I do have to point out, I can't be shipping st stuff out to people all around the world and things like that. Uh, I can't be paying for shipping out of my pocket. So what's going to happen is uh, everything beyond the shipping is going to get donated to Lil Bub's Big Fun. So there you have it. Annie and Abyss, keep an eye out on uh, on Twitter. And I will actually mention the auction that's going on on all the shows leading up to uh, next Friday. We'll, we'll find the, we'll pick the winner. We'll actually pull the winner live next Friday show. So that's what we will be doing. Okay, so got a bunch of stuff in the mail. A couple items are actually upstairs. I forgot to bring them down. But uh, got a bunch of stuff from Flying Pig Games. My good friend, Mark Walker. Mark H. Walker, I should say. So got some uh, some new dice. 
So Battle Kursk and uh, Ghost Front are coming soon, but there are some advanced copies that of course he's that Mark has sent out for review. So I've got them. So I've got I've got the strategy guide for uh Battle of Kursk. So got that. <laughs> Ready for this? A mouse pad. <laughs> Which this is all part of the uh the Kickstarter. And of course, uh you will be able to usually I know Mark normally puts things together where he doesn't really do Kickstarter exclusives. You can get stuff on Kickstarter as a bundle and save money, but he usually, like for an example, the uh, the mouse pad, I won't be surprised if that'll be available on the Flying Pig Games website for purchase. So we've got the expansion, Tracks in the Mud. So this is an expansion to the Platoon Commander Deluxe Kursk. So we've got that. Obviously enough, right? <laughs> we got... Whoop, it's upside down. Yes, it's upside down. <laughs> We've got Platoon Commander Deluxe, the Battle of Kursk. I'm going to be unboxing this on Wednesday show. So we are going to take a look at this on Wednesday show. It is War Game Wednesdays, which are actually sponsored now by Flying Pig Games and Tiny Battle Publishing. Does not mean that's all I'm ever going to look at on Wednesdays. Those are our sponsors right now, but that's what I'll be looking at on Wednesday's show. And then I also got Ghost Front. So this is the new, and as you can see, it's in one of these, you know, big boxes. Another one of these big size boxes about the size of uh, Old School Tactical. Except Old School Tactical is a little deeper, but uh, same, same height, I guess we'll say. So this is the uh, this is the Battle of the Bulge expansion for Old School Tactical Volume Two. So we will be taking a look at this as well. All right. So, um, so that's what came in the in the mail. So next week, I am going to on Monday. This just came today. This is hot off the press. This is the emissary lost. Uh, it's uh, Mercy of the Icons Part 1. This is a new supplement for Coriolis. This is, uh, I believe this is the first hardcover supplement. There have been some adventures. There have been some source books that came out, but they were in PDF. This is a new source book that is actually part one of a, uh, a big adventure campaign as well. We're going to take a look at this on Monday. Coriolis is pretty cool. I actually I think Coriolis is pretty pretty sweet. Uh, Ghost World, hey there. Uh, loved your review of Four Hammer 4 ebook. Hey, thanks, Ghost World. Hey, thanks for popping in and saying hi, too. Um, if you are a fan of Torg, I'm getting to this in a second. Uh, okay, so this is Monday's show, right? Tuesday's show is going to be a little weird because I have been playing a lot of a PC game, which is kind of a deck building game. It's, 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 a. Uh, it's an odd duck, but it's awesome. And it's Slay the Spire. So I'm trying to figure out how I can actually do a review of it without actually having to sit there and record a bunch of, you know, bunch of uh, video of the actual gameplay. So I'm up in the air on how to do that. But uh, I think I'm going to do that on Tuesday. Uh, something a little bit different, but it is kind of a deck building game. So it really does fit into what we usually play. So that'll be on Tuesday's show. I already mentioned Wednesday, I will be unboxing and taking a first look at Deluxe Plat uh, Platoon Commander Deluxe, I should say, Battle of Curse. Then on Thursday, I'm gonna review both the Living Land source book as well as the Delphi missions for Torg Eternity. These are the Living Land Delphi missions. So. I will be reviewing these on Thursday's show and then on Friday's show. I am finally, I would have had this done this week. It's just, so it was, I was not going to be down here with below freezing temperatures. <laughs> Sorry. I like doing the show. I don't like doing the show that much. But I'm going to finally review the thing infection at Outpost 31 from USAopoly as well as Project, uh, oh, I'm sorry, Mondo Raygun. I wanted to say Project Raygun, but no, it's Mondo. Love the boxer to 
Kursk. Yes, it is very, very cool artwork on the cover here. Um, and as far as I understand, now I, I don't know for sure because actually Platoon Commander is from Tiny Battle Publishing, whereas the Platoon Commander Deluxe is from Flying Pig Games. Same owner, same Mark H. Walker. But uh, I, I kind of have the impression that Platoon Commander might be a pretty easily accessible war game. I'm not positive. I do not know that for sure, but I do kind of have a feeling that that is sort of how it works. Don't know. I could crack it open and be like, you know, 500 pages of rules. Nah, I don't think Mark would do something like that. All right. So I'm sure some folks are tuning in to uh, check out my review of Paper Tales which is from Stronghold Games. It's designed by Masato Usugi. That is just a stab in the dark on that name. With art provided by Christine Elkoff. The game is for two to five players, ages 12 and up, plays in around 30 minutes, and it does carry an MSRP of $44.95. All right, let's move on over to the other camera. So I'm gonna put on ye old reading specs and grab myself a quick sip. So Paper Tales is a fantasy game where each of the players, like I said, you got two to five players. Each of them are competing to have the uh, most legendary kingdom. And to do so, you're going to be bringing in, you're going to uh, hire various different characters and monsters and, and things like that to... Uh, to battle other players, to get you legend points, which are victory points in essence. And uh, you're gonna create, it's, an, it's a kind of a, an engine building game. You're gonna build your engine. You're gonna try to, uh, try to, you know, get as much coin. But the big premise of the game is to get your legend points, your victory points here. So as we take a look around, I'm gonna show off uh, some of the items here. I will zoom in on some of the cards and that. I did an unboxing video for Paper Tales not too far back. Um, finally got it to the table enough times to get a review. Now, this, this game is actually, I think tonight's the third time I've tried to get this reviewed. Something, all, I was gonna do it on Monday and then we had the power outage. So, um, so yeah, it's it's just bizarre. It seems like every time I've tried to uh, do, a, do a review for Paper Tales, something has happened. All right, so anyway, so each of the players is going to have a colored disc, just like so. They're each going to get a card that's going to tell them exactly what's going on in the game. So let's say we got green, Say green, purple, and white. Although, funny enough, these discs do not match exactly, but that's okay. So we're gonna do we're gonna use green, white, and purple. We'll put them all at at zero here. We've got this this cylinder here. This cylinder is gonna go right there. So the game plays over uh, four turn. I should say four turns. There are six phases in each of the turns as well. So, and it tells you exactly right here. This is what you do on the game turn. And then this is some handy dandy info as well. What you're basically doing is this is a card drafting game. So it is simultaneous play. So everybody's going to be drafting cards at the same time. Everybody's going to be revealing cards at the same time. Everyone is going to be going to war at the same time. They're going to collect their income at the same time. They're going to construct buildings at the same time, and they're going to age their units at the same time as well. So one of the aspects that uh, I found interesting about Paper Tales is that your units will age. So in, in, unless you're doing something special, you have a, a card that allows you to, uh, to keep them around longer, most of the most of the characters, most of the uh, employees, villagers, what have you, are only going to last a couple of turns in the game. So each of the players is going to receive a set of cards, which are the town cards. You know what? 
I am going to zoom in a little bit. Let's do that. There. All right. Let's move some of this stuff out of the way. Okay. So going to show off some of the cards here. All right. So you're going to have barracks, a mine, a temple. Here's the mine. Temple. Tavern. Town. So we've got these five available buildings. It's going to show you that's the level one of that building. So when you first build this building, build this site, I guess we'll say, it's, uh, it's basically level one. It's going to give you one legend point. Remember, those are the victory points. You're going to track those there. It's going to tell you, okay, so in order to build this, what do I need? Well, it's saying, okay, if you want to build that level one, the mine is going to cost you one wood. Well, where do you get wood from? Well, you get wood from the various different characters. Some of them will provide you with wood. Now, what does the mine do? Well, mine provides you with crystal every turn. If you wanted to create a level two mine, it's gonna cost you one wood and one crystal. Now, you can conceivably build a level two right off the bat if you have the prerequisite. So in this case, for the mine, you would need two wood, one crystal, and you could automatically build the second level mine. If you notice here, all of a sudden now it's like, okay, so we get three legend points for that. And we get some bonuses as well. So you're going to see on some of the cards here, it's going to show you like a little icon and then a number. And uh, some of the gang, when we first started playing, they're like, what, what does that mean? I said, okay, look at your card. Look at your, your player aid card. Recruitment, deployment, wars, income, construction, aging. It's just showing you this is, the, this is the phase of the turn. So third phase is wars. Well, so in the third phase, you will get two legend points for every crystal you have in your kingdom. So fairly easy. It kind of threw some people off because they're like, well, what is that supposed to do? It's like, for an example, the town. The town will cost you one wood to build, but you get one food, which look at steak. Yeah, baby. And one wood. Once it's been built, if you wanted to build level two, you need three wood and so on and so forth. Now, that's basically the town cards. Um, everybody's got the same town cards. So everybody's going to have, or I should say, uh, settlement site cards, because, you know, that's the town there. Oh, we've got the barracks, the temple, the tavern, and the mine. So everybody's going to have the same cards to start off with. You don't, you have to build these. You are not going to start with these in your hand. All right, so to start off each turn, each of the players is going to be dealt five cards, They're going to take a look at the five cards. They're going to draft one card, and then they're going to hand their remaining stack of cards to the player next to them. Now, right here, it's going to show you, well, how do we do this? Okay, so the first first turn, you're going to do it clockwise, counterclockwise, clockwise, counterclockwise. Of course, there are rules for two players, so it, you know, it doesn't really matter in, in that respect. We'll show off the rules a little bit. I'll zoom back out just a touch. The rules are just a few pages. Um, they're pretty clear as far as um, clarity. Here's the optional rules for two player games. Some clarifications over here now. This was originally released, I believe, uh, I'm almost positive, this is a Japanese game, originally. And um, so I, 
I don't know if there's been, well, of course, the rules have been localized, obviously enough, translated to English. But uh, I don't know if um, if some of the uh, some of the maybe trickier parts, because of course, like most card games, it's you know what's on the card is really going to determine what's going on. So I'm not sure if uh, if some some of the stuff because I had heard originally that the rules were not all that clear for Paper Tales, but to be honest. It's, they gotta be folks gotta be talking about the first edition because I had really no uh, no issues uh, reading through these rules. Got eight pages, right? They they are fairly dense in the eight pages, but still, I didn't have any issues with it. So uh, and so this is a fairly easy game to teach as well. So we'll put that back there. So kind of give you an idea of what we're looking at the anatomy of these cards. Let's zoom back in a little bit. Okay. So for an example, we got the cave spirit. So it's gonna tell you, okay, how much is it gonna cost you to actually put this in play? Because when you when you draft a card, that doesn't mean you necessarily automatically get that card and get to put it out there and play. You have to have the money to be able to recruit that card that you've drawn or you've drafted. So it's gonna tell us, okay, so we need one coin. Shows us there are two copies of this card in the deck. It shows that this cave spirit has a strength of four, which is utilized during wars. And then it's going to show you that during your second, you're going to second round, you're looking at in the, second phase i should say in the deployment phase you're actually going to add an aging token or aged token to the case spirit which normally you would not do that uh until the uh end of the turn shows you okay so you'll get a crystal for having the cave spirit we've got the veteran Actually, Veteran kind of does the same thing. There are three copies of the Veteran in the deck. Costs you nothing to bring the Veteran into play. They've got a strength of three. Once again, during the deployment phase, you're going to actually place an aging token on the Veteran. All right, we've got the Peddler. Peddler costs you one. So in income phase, which is in the fourth phase in the turn, the Peddler will actually earn you a gold piece and we show here we've got the uh the one strength for battling which is kind of kind of weird you wouldn't think a peddler would have uh you know fighting prowess now you got the militia man got a two with the asterisk so you'll actually get plus one for each of the aging tokens that would be on the militia man so in the second turn that this militia was around they would actually have a strength of three so what you basically do is you're going to have five cards you're going to draft one of the cards uh, let's say for an example let's do that we got the leviathan there so each of the players are actually going to start off with three coins that's all they've got they got three coins to start the game with so uh what would happen in a case like this is you could say well I've got these cards. The first thing you might be looking at is, oh, what, what's the recruitment cost? Because if I take that Leviathan, that's going to cost me all my my coins to actually bring this into play. And then I still have three more cards, or actually four more cards, I should say, that I, I need to select. And if I want to bring them out, I'm going to have to pay for them. So... Anyway, so for an example here, I would maybe say, you know what? I'm going to take the militia. I'm going to take the militia. Now, of course, you're not going to tell anybody what you got. You're just going to take the card. You're going to draft your card and you're going to, everybody's going to hand over their little stacks of cards and you're going to get four cards for an example. And next time around, take a look. Oh, forest child, farmer. Golem, Golem's actually pretty cool. And the Relic, actually the Relic is pretty cool too. 
Um, Relic never dies. So for two, you would have that permanently. Of course, it doesn't help you out in wars. It doesn't help you out in, in battles and things like that. But uh, so let's say that these were the cards that were handed over to me here. So I'd say, mm, you know what? Uh, I wouldn't mind building a town when I get an opportunity to. So I think I'll take this forest child. And let's say, okay, then next I get uh, three more cards. Come back around to me. I got a veteran peddler and a cave spirit. Nah, you know what? I think I'll take the peddler. And I get the two cards. Uh, I've got a knight and a miner. Uh, I take the miner. And then I would have one card. And then we got a blacksmith. So let's say for an example, that's that's what we were looking at as we did our draft. Let me zoom back out a little bit. So what will happen is everybody has their um, their kingdom, right? They're the forces of their kingdom. So what you'll end up doing is you've got your recruitment phase. So that's what we just did. We just did the draft. Then we have a deployment phase. Everyone's going to do all this at the same time. So you're going to take. Uh, let's do it like so. You're going to take your four. You're going to have four spots. You got four spots that you can have. You've got the first rank here. Let's push this up. And the second second rank below. So. You go to war with your neighbors. So each turn, you're battling with your neighbors. Thing is, if you're a very, very famous card drafting game that that a lot of people have uh, have played Seven Wonders, same kind of thing. You know what? You only worry about the person to your right and to your left. You don't concern yourself with somebody across the table from you or anything like that. There's five players. You're only worried about the player on your right and your left. So when you would deploy, so remember I said, oh, I've got three coins. Well, when you deploy your units, you have to pay the recruitment fee. So thankfully I've got three coins, one, two, three. So I'd be able to pay those in, bingo. Now everybody's paid for the deployment. Now we go to war with with our other uh, players on our right and our left. So what you do is you're gonna count up the uh, the strength that's in the, in the shield with the cross swords. You're gonna count your strength, you're gonna total it up, you're gonna compare it to the player on your left, player on your right. And if you're higher, then you win. You, you won that war. And if you win the war, you would get Oops. Three legend points. How about that? So you get the three legend points. If you were to defeat both your neighbors, you would have six legend points. So remember, the name of the game is whoever's got the most legend points at the end of the game is declared the winner. They have the most legendary empire. Their kingdom was, you know, they wrote tales. Bards sing songs about them. All right, so what happens next is then you have income. So you're going to earn two coins right off the bat. Boom, you got two coins. Now you're going to take a look to see, okay, so what do these guys provide for me? Uh, okay, so I'm going to get uh, two wood. I'm going to get one crystal, and I'm going to get food. I'm going to get that steak. So that's what you're going to get. That That is your, those are your resources that you've got. So the next phase, the fifth phase is construction. So you've got an option. You can either build one of the sites or you can upgrade one of your sites. You can't do both. You can only do one or the other. So for an example, if I sat there and said, well, I have two wood, I've got one crystal. Oh, uh, well, I can build the town, I could build the barracks, I could build the tavern, I could build the mine. Ah, just for the heck of it, I will use my food and I will build the tavern. 
Now, normally you're going to have a little bit of space in front of you. So you're going to, you're going to keep these off to the side. So that is your, your construction. Then, and every, once again, everyone is doing all of these phases at the same time. This moves very, very quickly. Once everybody kind of has an idea, kind of has a grasp of the game, this zips right along. I know the box says 30 minutes, but the gang and I, once, once we kind of ironed out what some of the little icons meant, then we were like, we were cranking through games in like 20 minutes, 25 minutes. So once you've done your construction, then you move on to the last phase, and that is aging. Every one of these will get an age token. So once uh, you reach the end of a turn, any of the cards, any of the units that you've got that have the age token on it, that's had that age token the whole turn, they die off. They're gone. They leave. All right. So something else I should point out is if you ever upgrade any of your sites to a level two, that unlocks a fifth slot. That unlocks a fifth slot for you. And uh, that's why you're drafting five cards. You're drafting the five cards to start off each of the turns because at one point, hopefully, you will have bumped up one of your, uh, one of your locations, one of your sites here to be a level two. If you build a second locale, you not only have to pay the price to build it, you actually have to also pay two coins. Pay two coins for each additional building that you have or site that you have. Um, that kind of prevents somebody from having too many of these various different locations out there at one time. Gives a little more variety too because if it was really, really easy, then every player would have all five of these out. And, you know, come on, that's a little boring. Uh, I do have to point out these sites are kind of similar in some respects. There isn't a whole lot that makes them really, really unique, but they are kind of cool. They are pretty interesting. And I do like the aspect of you have to actually pay the two additional coins uh, for each additional building that you've got to uh, to kind of prevent you from really getting way out of hand. So when we get around to the next turn, let's say as an example here, we've got the level one tavern, which of course you're gonna be tracking all of your legend points as you're going along. So when we get another hand, let's just take five here. So when we draft through another round, now we have the option of we can replace, we can replace different cards. So if I wanted to, when I got to my deployment phase, I could say, well, you know what? I don't need the peddler anymore. I'd rather have the relic. So I could pay for the relic and just discard the peddler. Uh, other thing I can do too is I can actually rearrange my ranks so as an example let's say well what if i got this cave spirit and i still want to keep that miner well i might say ah oh, you know i don't want the forest child anymore i'm gonna move the miner down here and i'll put the cave spirit up here because now i've got a strength of seven because the special ability of the militia is that for every one of these tokens they get an additional strength. So seven strength, that's pretty good to be taking on my neighbors. So um, once again, like I said, if you've played Seven Wonders, you already know the whole, hey, I'm fighting the person to my right and to my left. Uh, but it, not as, it's this is not as detailed. So once you have gone through all four rounds, basically what you're gonna do is you're gonna look to see, hey, who has the most legend points and whoever's got the most legend points is declared the winner. Now, in the case of a tie, then you have to play a game of terraforming Mars to determine who's the winner. 
Nah, I'm teasing. Uh, if it ends up in a tie, it's a tie. There's There are no tie breakers as far as the game itself. Uh, some of the things I like, I like the component quality. I think the component quality is really nice. Uh, I think this, this board here, I mean, Stronghold could easily just toss in like some really thin paper, but now it's even got a little bit of artwork on the back. That's kind of going the extra mile. I like that. Uh, I dig how the artwork has, I'll zoom in a little bit. Well, I'm zooming out. That's uh, the opposite way, Jeff. I gotta tighten this camera up. This camera kind of shifts a little too easily. So this artwork almost has kind of like a, a almost like a layered paper look to it. Uh, as weird as this sounds, kind of along the lines of how they do um, South Park. <laughs> so, of course, it's, you know, but I like, it's it's actually, I, I like the artwork. I like the artwork a lot. I think it's, there's, there's a specific name for this kind of art, this sort of paper art. Now, Obviously enough, I, I'm 99% positive that this was digitally rendered, but these were not actual, like this is not actual paper art to start with. But uh, yeah, I definitely like it. Uh, the game is very, very easy to learn. Uh, some of the creatures, some of their special abilities, like for an example, here we go, the demon right here, takes a little, you know, some, some sometimes looking at, when you're first learning to play the game, looking at these symbols down here, it takes you a second where you're like, um, uh, okay, uh, all right. So for an example here, so it's basically saying in the deployment phase, because what you'll end up doing, I, I guess I probably should have pointed this out. When you've done your recruitment and you're doing your deployment, you place all your cards face down. And then when you reveal them, you actually pay their recruiting cost to bring them out. Um, not super, not super, super important or critical that I forgot to mention that, but I should mention that. So for an example here, the demon during the deployment phase, you're going to actually put, you would put an aging token on it. And then in the sixth phase, it's minus three legend points if the demon dies with only one single age token on it. So it's just some of the stuff like, okay, there's the monkey. The monkey's actually minus one. So you actually get money, you get money when the monkey dies. So got the archer. The archer is kind of cool because the archer can actually stay in the bottom, bottom rank, the second rank and still fight. So that's pretty cool. So you still, you could count the strength of two for the archer. So uh, another thing is um, the money can kind of, kind of be tight and then not necessarily be really tight. Um, it's just, it kind of ebbs and flows as far as the coinage. Uh, another thing I'll mention, I know a lot of people who uh, play uh, card drafting games, one of their kind of tactics, one of their strategies is to sort of um, deny other players of cards as opposed to, you know, if, if it's kind of like, well, you know, there's, there isn't a card in here that I can really use that uh, they're kind of like, well, then what I'm going to do instead is I'm going to deny somebody else a card that would help them. I don't see that as much in Paper Tales because a lot of times you're you're kind of putting together your strategy on the fly each turn based on what, what's actually coming up for you to be able to draft. Uh, that is one of the aspects that I know some people do not like about card drafting games. Uh, I'll be the first to admit that when I first played Seven Wonders, I was like, yeah, this is pretty cool. I, this is different. You know, of course, we're talking this is years ago. I thought, yeah, this, you know, this, this is interesting. And then the more I played, the more the, the, the bloom <laughs> kind of came off the rose there, you know. Uh, in Paper Tales, I don't, I don't see that happening uh, 
quite as much as I did in Seven Wonders. Now, there is an additional expansion. So, you know, there there's a limited number of cards in Paper Tales, but there is a, an expansion that came out right about the same time that the core game came out. So there's, uh, there's more options out there. I do not know what kind of support Paper Tales is going to have from Stronghold Games. I would assume probably pretty decent support. I'm not saying, you know, it's going to be like, wow, every, every six months we're getting an expansion. But I do think it's done well for them. I, I, think, I think Paper Tales has done fairly decent for Stronghold Games. I like it. Uh, I mean, is it like reinventing the wheel? No. Um, it's easy to teach. Honestly, once you get a, a hang of it, you can crank out a game in about 20, maybe 25 minutes at the most. If you got somebody who's kind of sitting there, kind of going, oh, well, do I want to draft this card or that card? Uh, so it moves nice and quick. I like the fact that everybody's uh, taking their turns at the same time. I will point out when it came to uh, the actual paying the recruiting cost, we did kind of go around and, and take turns doing that just to make sure nobody made any mistakes or anything like that. But uh, I like the game. I, I really do. I think it's a, it's a good addition. It's for ages 12 and up. And I got to be honest, if you can trust your kids not to like swallow this stuff, you know, like the cylinder and that, I think you can go a little bit lower than that, especially if you're kind of helping helping out. I, I could easily see 10-year-old kids playing this game uh, with, you know, mom and dad or, you know, their uncle, you know. So on a scale of 1 to 10, I definitely give Paper Tales an 8.2. I don't rank it as, I don't rank it higher than that simply because uh, I like it. I don't think it's a phenomenal game, but I do like it, and I would certainly bust this out when I had, you know, maybe half hour or something um, when I was looking to uh, wind up or wind down an evening of ga gaming. So once again, as I mentioned, Paper Tales is for two to five players, ages 12 and up, plays in, the box says 30 minutes, but I don't even think the first game we played lasted 30 minutes. It does carry an MSRP of $44.95. That is my other kind of knock on it that I dipped the score down a little bit. I don't think this is a $45 game. Um, I don't think there's a lot of 20 minute games out there that I would want to pay $45 for. That said, it's the MSRP. So personally, I think this is more like a $30, $35 game. And there are plenty of online retailers out there right now. And that's uh, exactly what you would spend with them to get your copy of Paper Tales. But I did ding it a little bit on the scoring itself because I think $45 effectively as an MSRP is a bit much. All right, so that is it for tonight's show. As I mentioned on Monday's show, we are gonna page through, we're gonna take a deep dive into the Mercy of the Icons part one, Emissary Lost for Coriolis from Free League Publishing and Modifius Entertainment. All right, so if you, uh, I should point out, if you like the video, please give it a thumbs up. If you catch some of the videos on the Gaming Gang channel and you like them, please subscribe. And of course, ring that little bell because that not only notifies you when there's a new video, but it'll also tell you when the show's actually streaming live because every once in a while, it's a few minutes late. Like tonight, but 10 minutes late. Anywho, uh, when you are not watching videos on the Gaming Gang channel, please be sure to go visit thegaminggang.com for all the latest in gaming news, reviews, comics, movies, TV. By now, you know the drill. Get your geek on at thegaminggang.com. Speaking of reviews, I did mention the Call of Cthulhu slash gumshoe not really Trail of Cthulhu, supplement uh, Harlem Unbound by Chris Spivey and his Dark Hue Studios. Just was reviewed by Sammy. Uh, it's up today. 10 out of 10, baby. 10 out of 10. Touch higher than I would have given it, but I, I would have given it about 9.5 because I think it's a fantastic supplement. Be sure to check that out. All right, so that is it for tonight's show. By all means, enjoy your weekend. Have a very safe weekend. I will be back on Monday's show, and as always, 
Thank you very much for watching. Thanks again for watching The Daily Dope, presented by The Gaming Gang. If you liked this episode, be sure to give it a quick thumbs up. And if you dig the channel, please subscribe. If you'd like to check out our previous episode, click right here. And if you want to check out a somewhat randomly selected episode, give a click right down here. It'll be like opening a box of Cracker Jacks. You just don't know what you'll get. Once again, thanks for watching, and I'm Jeff McAleer.